today I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm in the midst of installing my bowsprit and it's uh I've never done this before so you know there's not like a how-to video on installing a bowsprit so my problem is I've got to line up these holes I've drilled the holes uh, already on the bowsprit um, except well I've I've drilled them and I filled them with epoxy and now uh, the one that I've drilled all the way through again is the head stay bolt hole so what I'm gonna do is and I'm gonna get some grief for this but you know what it's my boat I get to do what I want I'm going to lay a coat of marine text over this area that I've glassed up um, and I'm going to actually mount the bowsprit in exactly the right uh, spot in the marine text. I'm going to put a layer of marine text and then I'm going to tie it all down, weight it, and let it cure. And uh, that way I know that this front hole is exactly right and the other holes are already marked and filled so I can then, after it's all cured, I can drill through the holes on, on the bowsprit and through the deck. Um, and then I can refill the holes on the deck with a little bit of epoxy. I'll, I'll just drop some epoxy down in there and then I'll wait and I'll re-drill those and then I can put the new bolts in. And the new bolts aren't going to be here till next week anyway. I managed to find them on uh, Fastenal, through Fastenal and they had to order them in. So, so they'll be here uh, next week and by then this thing will be nice and cured and I can drill the holes and bolt it down completely secure. So that's what I'm doing right now. And yeah. All right, so let's uh let me show you my process of marine text. I love that stuff. Actually, the stuff I'm using is the Pettit version. Total Boat also makes a uh thickened epoxy uh, base coat type stuff. Uh, I really like that stuff. It's, it hardens like steel and it still sands. Um, yeah, so the stuff I'm using is this Easy Text, Easy Text Marine Epoxy Repair Compound by Pettit. It forms a really nice, uh, nice coat and it will glue that down and it the, the important thing the reason I'm doing this is it will fill any gaps uh, between the deck and the uh, bowsprit so no water can get in those little gaps if I were just to like put down 4,000 or uh, sick effect flex or something uh, chances are I'm gonna have little gaps in there that will not completely be waterproof. This will guarantee no water's getting underneath that thing. Uh, so now I just mix the second part of the compound in with this and mix it up. All right. This is just one to one, so I'm doing the whole jar of it. I may not use all of it, but I think I probably will. I think it'll take most of it. All right. Probably be good to have some gloves on. But I don't have any right now. So. If you're doing epoxy work and fiberglassing, save these little plastic containers from meat from the grocery store. Wash them up good and save them because they should come in so handy for all kinds of different stuff. 
when you're mixing epoxy and paint or whatever it's really pretty pretty awesome actually all right since this is curing I'm gonna turn that off and I'll show you the once I get it on there I'll show it to you I'm not gonna try and I'm rather poor and I don't want my camera to get screwed up with this kind of shit so I don't take my camera up to do stuff like that I'll now it's mixed up I'll put it up there and then I'll film it after before I put the sprit on okay so I've got the marine text spread out and uh, Jimmy's on his way out to help me lower the bow sprit onto the spot and then we'll tie it down and weight it down with this bucket of chain I have so here we are here's the sprit and there's the bed of marine text that'll fill in all the gaps so let me get this set up so that maybe you can see something I don't know we'll put it up here yeah well I'll just leave that running and we'll see how it works all right so if you hand up that bucket of chain to me first be careful up here with you when you come up that you don't reach into that white marine text that ought to do it huh <laughs> that's enough weight don't you think yeah that'll be enough all right so here's uh you want to put this somewhere where you can run it through in, once we get it on there all right so I think what I'll do is I'll hand you that end we don't want to set it down until we get it and don't don't go that far up one step down please I don't need you falling I think you'll be all right yeah I've also got it here so I think I think we'll be fine Got it supported? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Boy. It's just awkward. It should be right there. A uh, little bit. Right. Which way? There, right there. Okay. Is it in the right spot? Okay. And it looks exactly right. Yep. Right, right the tape. Okay. Come on up here. Oh, hand me that thing first. That bit. There we go. Okay, come on up here. All right. If you will. Push down, I'll tie this. Don't try not to slide it as you're pushing. There she is, finished, except for the bolt holes being re-drilled and all of the uh, hardware okay. installed. Um, today I'm working on the two bronze pieces that go along the side of the hull to help support the bow sprit from side to side. I had one more piece of bronze left from my chain plate um, work that was supposed to go on the head stay, the, the forward chain plate. And so I've cut it down into two pieces. I'm going to attach it to the hull with probably two bolts um, on each one. And I'm going to bend both sides out so that the forward side of the chain plate can attach to the bowsprit and then the back side I can attach a shackle and use it for the attachment for my, my
preventer on my boom when I'm offshore. So here's what I've got. I've got these two pieces of bronze and then I rig up my grinder right here on my table saw. I attach it with four bolts and it allows me to <laughs> have a table for my grinder. So uh, the next step here is to grind this away. All right, well, when you can't find your work gloves because you just cleaned the garage and you don't remember where you put them, oven mitts, best I can do. Yeah, I have my eye safety on because I did hurt my, I got a piece last time in my eye, I had to go to the eye doctor. So the first thing I do is round off the edges here. That's pretty much all I'm going to do. The next part is to find a place on this trailer to use the bar to give the slight bends that I need in this. If I can only get one bend in it, that's fine. I'll, I won't use the preventer uh, system that I was thinking of. If I can get bend in each side, that would be better. All right, let me get this set up. All right, well, hopefully my camera won't fall off there. This. Okay, so I want my bend to be about right there. That was a big thing for me to discover that if you put oil on the metal that you're drilling the hole through and keep oiling the hole, uh, it first of all, it doesn't break the bits and it also goes way faster keeping the metal cool with that oil. I don't even remember how I found that out. I think I was asking the guy at Ace Hardware 
why do I have to keep replacing these bits? And he said, well, what are you doing with them? Yeah, that's what happened. And then he said, oh, yeah, you got to get this oil. Put it on. It works great. So if you didn't know that, now you do if you're drilling a lot of holes through bronze or steel especially. Oh, my gosh. These were bronze and they still... I had to do every hole for all of those chain plates. So <laughs> I'm sure I annoyed our neighbor. Well, actually, I know I annoyed our neighbor. But hey, I'm going to be sailing in the big blue here pretty quick, so that's all right. There's my finished little chain plate. So I'm not going to bore you with the finishing of the next one. That way maybe I'll have enough battery to do the interior stuff that I got to tear apart. All right, so I know that this is where the bow pulpit meets the deck. So my thought is, I looked out there and that's about the right spot for, or somewhere in here for that. Uh, so now I've got to cut these pieces right here is where the inside stud is because that's where these all these uh, little fasteners are. So if I cut it right there in the middle of those two, uh, then I should be able to remove uh, the fasteners on both ends of those top two and then access this. So that's what I'm going to do next. And I'm going to use my multi-tool, oscillating tool, to cut those boards. There we have it. That's the area I'm gonna cut my, well actually I think I'll drill, I think I'll drill my holes through from the inside uh, because I wanna make sure I get into a place here that I can actually access to tighten them. If I go out there and I like go, oh, I'm gonna drill right here and then I'll come down here and it'll be in somewhere else so that's my that's my thought I'm gonna do that it's always fun drilling per holes in perfectly good hull I don't care where it is it's never it's never fun so time to drill next so I, I'm not sure I really explained that very well what I was worried about if I if I was to drill the holes from outside, even if I measured and everything, I, I think you, you never know that it's going to come out in exactly the right spot. Let's go out and see where that goes. See where we ended up and how much damage I did to the outside with that little stunt. about the lawnmower. How do, how do those guys do this stuff with with a camera at the same time? 
wanna, this is just a dry fit, and then I'll, of course, add some 3M. Ooh, am I gonna be able to get, I think I can. go finished this feeling moves me every single day I'm captured by your charm and by your